Hey fans, thanks for coming back and watching us on this almost finished engine. Today we're gonna to be focusing on a very critical part of the engine build, and that's your engine timing. We're gonna go over some of the details on how to make sure that you're in time, the things to watch out for, and get this engine pretty much back together after that, and she'll be ready to be put back in the ski. So stay tuned and keep on watching, thanks. This season of Project X is brought to you by SBT, the largest supplier of high quality jet ski parts in the world. So as I mentioned before, I already put my intake side timing chain tensioner guide assembly already in there. It was a lot easier when I installed the head that way. Now the bolts aren't tightened yet, but I left them loose on purpose. That'll help me get the chain back in place. So we're gonna go over covering the chain installation and the actual new camshafts. So I have the actual camshafts here, brand new, provided to us from SBT, along with my brand new sprockets and brand new chain, brand new timing chain tensioner, and all of the pieces associated with that. Before I drop my camshaft into place, I do wanna make sure that you're using a liberal amount of assembly lube or some type of molly to protect this when you start it up. This is the most crucial part about any camshaft installation is a good amount of lubrication on here and I like to use the assembly lube to keep some of that lube on there especially upon our first startup so I'm going to use a lot of that and, and you'll see on the top here our, our bearing surfaces are, are essentially molded into the cylinder head itself I don't have any actual bearings that we'll be replacing or installing new ones same with the on the other side of the actual cap when we're bolting those on they're all machined into the actual surfaces of the, the components themselves. So I do, again, wanna make sure that I'm using a good amount of assembly lube right where the bearing clearances are, and of course where my valve lifters are, and the lobes. I like to coat all of these really well as, uh, as well so that everything's coated again. It's really crucial for that first startup. So we're gonna go ahead and start installing all our components here. First one I'm gonna undo I'm just gonna go ahead and slide my exhaust timing. It's on the exhaust side of the chain tensioner in there. These ones are relatively easy, it just slides into place. You'll notice on a lot of these builds, we use a lot of different chemicals. You're using a little bit of engine oil, you're using some different sealants or some different RTV, you're using a little bit of a thicker assembly lube, essentially a really heavyweight oil. You might be wondering, well, what happens when that's in the engine? It's okay. We're gonna end up adding brand new AMS oil, synthetic oil to this engine, but with any rebuild, you only want to use that engine oil for so long before it's changed out. It's a much quicker oil change interval after a full rebuild with like this, kind of flush all those chemicals out and then drain it and put it in a brand new oil and filter within a short amount of riding. We're not talking we want to go a whole, a whole season with this and wait. You only want to do a couple rides and then go ahead and change that oil out, get rid of any of the contaminants that may have been in that oil and put in fresh oil. You'll notice I haven't installed the actual caps yet. There's a couple reasons for that. One is I want to be able to keep some flexibility on this chain so it'll allow me to move it around a little bit when I'm getting it installed, especially around the actual snout of the crankshaft down here, where I told you I left the actual tensioners loose because it helps to be able to move them around to get that chain on there. There's not a lot of clearance down here when you have the actual tensioner or the guides in place, so you might have to remove them and then reinstall them to get that chain on there. Another thing to keep in mind, all of the slack in your timing chain needs to be on the intake side over here. This is where my oil fed timing chain tensioner is located on this side. 
And what that does, once it has oil pressure, it's going to be able to apply pressure to this guide over here to basically keep the tension where it needs to be. Without a chain tensioner, we have the chance of this engine jumping timing or causing serious engine damage. But all my slack needs to be gone on this side so that the, all of the slack is over here, which again, that tensioner makes up for. There's also a mark over here that we're gonna use to properly time our engine. Right now, I don't have the caps in place, but I know this is one of my marks and it should be straight up and down. And there's a mark on my cap that I'm also going to have to line up for. So right now I just have it kind of set up, but not 100%. But I wanted to get this one in place, get my chain on there before I move on to the actual intake one. Again, this is one of my caps. You'll see the bearing surfaces is actually machined into this. Also pay attention, there's an arrow and it's also marked exhaust. Again, facing towards the front of the engine is where your arrows go. Make sure to always keep everything in place. And a little bit of engine oil on your bolts. You're gonna see, I'm not tightening them down now. I really wanna just make sure that I can see the mark on this camshaft so I can make sure the timing is set correctly. We don't have a lower crankshaft mark. Oh, most of the time you'd see that on most engines. This one does not, basically because of where the oil pump sits and the gearing. So it's gonna be very critical that we get this set up correctly. So how did I get the bottom one in check already? Well, according to the service information, we've got to get this cylinder one right here, cylinder one at top dead center. I did that before I installed the head. I put it at top dead center. I set that already. There are special tools you can use. There's a gauge that you can get to be able to check that or sometimes the best method is just a really long screwdriver. Or you can use, with, with your spark plugs out, you can go ahead and gently touch the top of the cylinder, rotate your engine, and feel it going up or down. So again, as I would move up, once it, starts, once it reaches the top and it starts going down, you need to back up just a little bit to get that top dead center on that but I did set up top dead center. And it's important at this point, once you are at top dead center, we don't wanna move the cams. We don't wanna move the timing until everything is all set up because if I'm off a little bit or if the timing was a tooth off, I could have the chance of damaging a valve. So once you're all done, it's always critical as well to check to make sure that the engine spins and we'll do two full revolutions after we set the timing up. But I'm trying to make sure right now is get this this set up the top dead center on this cam. The challenge lies a little bit is of course these are lobes. So you, it can be a challenge. And right now I'm about a tooth off on this cam. So I still have got to get this cam over a little bit before I lock these into place and before I really set the timing on this. So when it comes to doing the timing chain, remember I said we've got to keep all of our, our, our slack over here on the intake side. I've got a little slack right here and I did that on purpose because I'm not quite lined up with this mark yet. So I've got to kind of move this cam a little bit because this one's good. My exhaust one's lined up with my mark over here. I've got a mark on this one where I'm off a little bit. So we're gonna try and bring that to take the slack out and also put it in time. And that should take all of my slack down to this side where my tensioner is. Sometimes that's a way to do it if you can't get quite get it. And plus again, you're also dealing with the fact that the camshaft wants to start opening valves. So you're fighting the downward motion of the cam and the lobes trying to do that. And then you're also trying to deal with getting everything perfectly lined up. So all of it can create a little bit of a challenge for you. And trust me, Sometimes you have to do it a couple times and you ain't gonna be the first one to ever have to do it a couple times to get it right. 
every tech out there and everybody who's done an engine and done some timing will know that that's a true statement. So, well, we're gonna see how close we are. I'm gonna snug those caps down a little bit so it allows me to move the cam a little bit. Kind of the same setup as before. You can see I got some gaps in the caps right now. So I just wanna get them down a little bit further so that they're starting to make contact with the valves themselves. I'm not gonna to torque these down until I have the timing perfect. But I just have them snugged a little bit to keep everything in place. So what I was saying, and what I've been kind of talking about is the lobes are sitting on the cams. And of course we know number one is that top dead center. So if I look inside my intake here, and of course my camera guy, Patrick, who's amazing, is gonna get this shot as well. You can see that as I've tightened down the cap on some, you know, started to slowly torque this down or kind of just snug it down a little bit, that my intake valves have remained closed in cylinder one. And like I said, I was fighting the fact that now some of the valves are starting to open, which is normal. That's absolutely normal. And you can see on cylinder two that those are open. Cylinder one is closed. So you're fighting the, the fact that it's wanting to open those valves because that's a normal cylinder operation but this is still closed. This one's open a little bit, and I'm sure my camera guy will get a little bit of a close-up of that, just so you can understand what I'm talking about, that the lobes are actually trying to do that as well, push down on it. So you're dealing with a lot of different forces when you're doing this timing chain stuff. Okay, I still haven't torqued these down yet. I've got them snug and, and, and kept in place. I, I do want to spin this motor off uh, a couple times and kind of check it to make sure that I'm in time. I've got my marks set here and here according to the arrows. I also have no slack right here, which is important. I'm, I've got taunt here, and I've got most of the slack left on my intake side. Now we can't spin this motor until we put a little tension on the actual guide in here. SBT has provided me a brand new timing chain tensioner to use on this engine. And if you're doing a timing chain rebuild or a timing chain replacement, it's never a bad idea. These are oil pressure fed, meaning that oil is going to come in and it extends the arm out to keep pressure on the chain to make sure that everything stays in place. If you're not going to replace this, you can compress the piston back down in its bore to be reused. And that is simply done by pushing and turning. There's a set of clips and this will eventually sit in that clip and lock it into place. Then you're gonna ask, well, how do you get it all out of being unlocked after it's in place? Well, you don't really have to worry about that too bad because once you put the new one in or the old one in and it's in its place, oil pressure will push that right back out. So you don't have to do any special tips or anything like that to get that back in uh, locked in place or anything like that. I'm just going to use the old one for now and kind of snug it in place to keep some ch tension on the chain. Because you'll see, no matter how many, you can get these. <laughs> and the second you take your finger off, it wants to pop out. And I don't feel like dealing with that with the new one, so I'm just gonna use the old one for now. Just kind of put it in place. And then I'll switch out with the new one if timing's in, in place on this. All right, we've got our timing chain tensioner in place, keeping tension on my chain. I'm taut here, I'm lined up here. I have the majority of any excess chain going towards the intake side. We're ready to try and turn this engine over twice counterclockwise using my tool that I have on the back, that, back there. And what we're gonna do is be listening for any abnormal noises 
I'm also going to see how it feels. How does the engine feel when I'm doing this? Does it feel like everything's rotating smoothly? Or am I running into some abnormal noises? Or does it not feel right? Does it feel off? Um, and the ultimate goal on this one is after two full revolutions, these will line back up where they're supposed to be and I'll still be at top dead center on my number one piston. So we're gonna rotate that and see how it does. Again, timing chains. I won't be the first one and I will never say I get 100% all the time, but we're gonna keep our fingers crossed on this one. All right, we've made two revolutions from back here counterclockwise to make sure that the timing marks would line back up where they're supposed to. And after two complete revolutions, my intake and my exhaust cams are right on the money. At this point, what I can do is start torquing all my caps as I didn't torque them in place before and finishing tightening up anything else that was loose up here. Again, I like to leave it just a little snug when I do these in case I need to make any adjustments. I got lucky in the first try. Sometimes it might take a little bit of work to get it perfect, but we're good. We're in time on this engine right now. We're in the home stretch of this build now. Once I torque this down, basically time to bolt the rest of it back on it and get it back in the ski. Thanks for watching.